a small town on the Arctic Circle in Barrow, Alaska, is gearing up for its annual 30 days of night, a time in the winter when the sun will not be seen. People who don't want to endure the long hours of darkness are able to travel to Fairbanks or other areas south. As the town prepares, the strange rows ashore from a larger ship and trudges toward Barrow. Once he arrives, he begins to sabotage the town. He robs and destroys all cell phones, destroys the town's only helicopter, and kills all of the sled dogs. Evan Olson, the sheriff of Barrow, is charged with these offenses. Stella, his ex-wife who moved out of town a while ago, missed the last plane out of town and will have to spend the next 30 days in Barrow. Although they try to distance themselves, she helped Evan with the stranger to subdue and take him to the station house when they confront them in a town diner. The stranger taunts Evan, Stella, Evan's teenage brother Jake, and their grandmother claiming that death is coming for them from the prison cell. Just then, vampires attack the local telecommunications center and power supply, rendering the town dark and isolated from the outside world. Evan goes to the telecommunications center and finds the operator's head on a pike. Stella and he then drive through town, trying to find the ones responsible for the horrific crime. Meanwhile, the vampires, led by Marlo, attack the town. Marlo uses an ancient, guttural language, while the rest of the vampires shriek. Bullets are useless against them unless they are struck in the head, and they kill the bulk of the town, including Evan's grandmother. Those who survive gather in the diner. The vampires attack Evan and Stella, but Bo Brower, the local snowplow driver, saves them. Everyone goes to the abandoned house of someone who had left town earlier that day. The house has a hidden attic where they will be able to hide. Marlo finds the stranger in the prison and kills him quickly, allowing him to have mercy on him in recognition of his work on behalf of the vampires. In order to preserve modern humanity's belief that vampires are the stuff of bad dreams and nothing more, Marlo instructs the vampires not to convert anyone into a vampire. Eben, Stella, Jake, and seven others will be sticking it out in the attic for the next week. They fight about leaving, but most of them remain. Only Wilson and his senile father, Isaac, are left behind. Evan goes out to help a stray survivor and discovers that beheading vampires will kill them. When a blizzard hits, Evan and the others use the whiteout conditions to make it to the grocery store. A young girl vampire assaults them, injuring one of them. The whiteout conditions have ended, preventing them from returning to the abandoned house. Everyone should go to the station house, according to Eben. He will provide a distraction by running to his grandmother's house. She smoked marijuana and has an ultraviolet light system. Eben makes it to the house, starts the generator, and lights up the vampires who have followed him. It hideously engulfs one, forcing Marlo to kill her. Evan escapes the house, but the vampires are on the run. Bo comes to the rescue once more, killing many of the vampires with his plow. He crashes into a hotel and then incinerates a box of dynamite, attempting to incinerate the vampires. His tactic is fruitless, but it gives Evan the opportunity to make it to the station house. The wounded member of the family transforms into a vampire there. With only a shred of his humanity remaining, he asks Evan to behead him. Evan accepts. Two more weeks have passed. Stella and Eben notice someone approaching them from across the street. Eben's deputy, Billy Kipka, is there. Eben and Stella make it to Billy's house. He killed his wife and daughters as the vampires attacked, but the pistol jammed before he could commit suicide. Stella and Eben take him back to the station house. They discover that the others have made it to the Utilitor, a power station that controls the oil pipeline, the only structure that still has electricity. Eben, Stella, and Billy are all sneaking towards the Utilitor. Stella tries to rescue a young girl who is being stalked by a vampire. 
Eben and Billy try to distract the vampire, while Stella takes the child to safety. Billy and Eben are now separated. They all make it to the utilitor, but a vampire follows Billy. The vampire attacks Billy, ripping into his neck. When the vampire attacks Eben, Billy knocks it into the gears of the utilitor's pond, disintegrating it, but his hand cut. Eben then kills Billy before he can turn into a vampire. In a few hours, the sun will rise. To hide their tracks, the vampires decide to incinerate the town. Stella alerts Eben that she and the young girl are hiding under an abandoned car, the fires quickly approaching them. Eben, realizing that he cannot defeat the vampires as a human, infuses himself with Billy's infected blood so he can fight them as a vampire. Eben wins a close fight with Marlo, who is battling a brutal battle. The other vampires disappear as a result of lack of leadership. Stella takes Eben to watch the sunrise. As he is incinerated, she holds him in her arms. 